They look like tablets, they both have attachable keyboards, both have optional pens. Which one should you get? Well, this is the iPad Pro versus Surface Pro Smackdown. My name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals and this video has a sponsor, Squarespace. This is the comparison video everybody wanted. The Surface Pro versus the iPad Pro. What's the better value? Which has a better drawing experience? Who would win in a foot race? As always, I'm here today to answer like two thirds of your questions. First, let's take a look at these product lines. In this corner, we have the Surface Pro. The Surface Pro runs Windows 10, has an optional pen and optional keyboard cover, and has been able to grow a mustache since the age of 16. In this corner, we have the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro runs iPad OS, has an optional Apple Pencil, an optional keyboard cover, and a large bump on the back of its head. That is not from a fight, it's just there because his dad thought it'd be cool to stick a camera in there. On paper, these competitors look pretty similar but they're very different those differences come from their operating systems Windows 10 and iPad OS iPad OS is a mobile interface that's gotten more desktop like over time and Windows 10 is a desktop interface that's got more touch friendly and mobile friendly over time which one is best there's no clear-cut answer to that comes down to what fits your needs and what you're looking to do here is where the rubber meets the road because the surface pro is a full Windows tablet it can run anything that Windows can run asterisk Brad why are you putting an asterisk by that that statement is true if we're talking about the Surface Pro 7 that statement isn't quite as true if we're talking about the new Surface Pro X Microsoft is trying something new with the Surface Pro X it's not using Intel's x86 architecture and instead is using an arm chip English Brad English what this means for you and me is the Surface Pro X can't run every Windows app out there the apps need to be recompiled in order to work on the Surface Pro X with that new arm chip if you want to do a deep dive into the hows and whys and what apps work and what apps don't you should check out my review of that that I did a couple weeks ago but for now what you need to know is only some of the apps are gonna run on the X but they're all gonna work just fine on the Surface Pro 7 and because of that if you're looking at this as an art tool that's what I'd recommend for now is sticking with the Surface Pro 7 instead of the X Adobe Photoshop Adobe Illustrator Adobe Animate Premiere Pro boom you can run any of those Clip Studio Sketchable Paint Tool Sci Leonardo Autodesk Sketchbook Corel you get the idea the iPad's greatest weakness is also one of its strengths iPad OS. On one hand, it's really lightweight and easy to use, and on the other hand, over the last couple years, software needs to be completely rewritten, the UI completely redone, to work without a mouse and a keyboard in a touch-only environment. Four years ago, I would say that this was one of the iPad Pro's weaknesses, but today, now that we have more apps and a much stronger ecosystem on the iPad, it's definitely one of the strengths. Apps like Procreate, Art Studio Pro, Linea, all built from the ground up to take advantage of the iPad and specifically its touch interface. One of the things we've started to see over the last couple of years is many apps have gone multi-platform. Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer are great replacements for Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, and they run both on Windows and on the iPad. Both versions, whether you're going with Windows or iPad, are great. The interface has a traditional desktop feel over on Windows, but the interface is a lot more touch-friendly over on the iPad. But I feel like the iPad also has more of a learning curve to it. Although this is all probably because I'm really old and I started out using desktop software and that's just what I'm more familiar with. Clip Studio, also on the iPad, that is a straight up port of the desktop version. In and of itself, that's pretty cool, but I think the interface is a little small, can be hard to navigate on an iPad compared to the mouse and keyboard you're using on the desktop. We're seeing Adobe start to move their apps over to the iPad as well. The new iPad version of Photoshop, Fresco also shows a lot of promise, but I'd say both of those are still kind of incomplete. They need more work, they need more features, especially Photoshop. Adobe's also working on Illustrator, probably ready for Adobe Max in the fall of 2020. That is a long way off. You don't wanna wait that long to start building a portfolio and getting your art out there. Today's sponsor, Squarespace, makes that super easy. Squarespace is an all 
in one platform. Professional websites, online stores, portfolios. It's even easy to claim your own domain and URL. Create a custom site that matches your style, bring your ideas to life. I took it for a spin, I built my portfolio with it. And as a web designer back in the day, it would have taken me a week or two to do what I was able to do in an evening using Squarespace. If you're showing off your work to potential clients or trying to land a full-time job, those templates look really professional. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Neither the Surface Pro or the iPad Pro come with a pen, but they are both pen compatible. And you might be thinking, geez, that's a lot of money for a stylus, but this is one area where you do not want to cheap out. The Surface Pen is compatible with many of the Surface devices out there, the Surface Book, the Surface Studio, all of the Surface Pros dating way back to the Surface Pro 3 from like five and a half years ago. Surface Pro Pen is expensive, but you can usually find the official Surface Pen for far less than the price listed on Microsoft's website. The new Surface Flat Pen is gonna cost you more. Its main benefit is that it charges and stores in the new keyboard covers that are available for just the Surface Pro X. And if you're wondering if there's any performance difference between the standard Surface Pen and the new Surface Flat Pen, no. In fact, they work the same on any device that you try them on. There are other pens out there that use the same pen protocol as the Surface Pen that will work just fine and are roughly the same price as the Surface Pen. But we wear, there are some really cheap styluses out there that won't give you the accuracy or pen pressure that you're looking for. The Apple Pencil, on the other hand, is the only good stylus available for the iPad Pro, full stop. There are other styluses out there, but they are very frustrating. I spent a lot of time trying to find one that wouldn't make me shout words that would have gotten me in trouble as a kid. In most of the categories, when we compare these two devices head to head, you would ask me, who's the winner in this category? And I would say, it's a pens. But when it comes to drawing, the Apple Pencil has my vote. The Apple Pencil just feels incredibly responsive and smooth. Part of that is the pen, and part of that is that the apps take advantage of the pen. The response rate on the Surface Pens are actually pretty darn good, but it doesn't matter because many of the apps that you're using to draw on the Surface don't take advantage of that response rate, and you still get a fair amount of lag behind your lines. That's not the case on the iPad. The Surface Pen uses Microsoft's pen protocol, formerly known as Ntrig. There are pros and cons to MP. The pros, great palm rejection. The cons, wavy lines when drawing. The faster you draw, the less wave. This is pretty common with battery powered styluses. If you try really hard, you can find a little bit of wave with the Apple Pencil, but like I said, you have to try really hard to find that wave. Whereas on the Surface Pen, you have to try really hard to get rid of that wave. If you're using the pen as an input device for handwriting or that sort of thing, it doesn't matter that much. If you're like me and you'd like to draw clean ink lines, it's a big, big deal. And that's why for me, the Apple Pencil is the clear winner. All right, I should probably say one negative thing about the Apple Pencil, and that is it is a very hard plastic. And when you're drawing on a glass screen, it slides around. I just don't like drawing on that kind of surface, but it's pretty easy to remedy with a matte screen protector on your iPad. The standard Surface Pen has a rubbery tip. This gives it some drag when you're drawing on the screen. And the new Flat Pen, it doesn't have a rubbery tip, but it's softer and wider, so it really doesn't feel too bad when you're drawing with it. Trying to figure out which one of these performs better is surprisingly hard to do, and that's because the operating systems are so different in how they handle their tasks. On paper, the entry-level Surface Pro beats the iPad Pro. One thing to take note of is drawing on a traditional computer, RAM becomes really important. I advise people working on Windows to go for at least eight gigabytes. You can't even get an iPad with eight gigabytes of RAM. But paper specs, they just don't tell the story because the iPad doesn't work like a traditional computer. The iPad OS takes a lot more resources away from background processes to focus on the active app that you have open. So if you're drawing in something like Procreate, most of your processing power and RAM are focused on making that app run as well as possible. Also, many of the apps are streamlined specifically for the iPad and aren't as robust as their desktop counterparts. All of this taken together means that drawing on the iPad often feels a lot more responsive and fast and frankly, 
more fun than drawing on a desktop computer. I know, I know, more fun is clearly a subjective statement. And there are some Windows apps that are starting to feel like iPad apps. For example, Adobe's latest app, Fresco, and also Sketchable's been around for a while. It runs really well on Surface Pro 7 or on the Surface Pro X. But in general, I have never seen my iPad Pro slow down. On a decently specced Surface Pro, slow down? you come across it every so often, just like you would on any laptop. This is an area where apples to apples comparisons are really hard. It's more like comparing an avocado to a taco. I've been talking a lot about the latest iPad Pro and the latest greatest Surface Pros, but if you go back to the Surface Pro 6 or even the Surface Pro 5, which is oddly just called the Surface Pro, those are still very capable machines and you can save yourself a good chunk of change settling for one of those, especially if you wanna go up to a better i7 processor or add more RAM. You're gonna save a lot of money and you're gonna see a pretty big performance bump over the entry level Surface Pro 7. Over on the iPad side, every single iPad Apple currently sells on their website works with the Apple Pencil. The iPad Pros work with the new Apple Pencil too, but the latest standard iPad, iPad Air, and iPad Mini all work with the original Apple Pencil. On paper, they may not look like much, but even the $329 iPad performs very, very, very well. And it's one of the best values in drawing tech available today. And as much as I liked last year's cute little Surface Go, it's not spec ready to be your main drawing computer, at least not at its lowest configuration. It's really gonna lag on you. For me, the iPad Pro is what I choose to draw with. But one thing to keep in mind is the iPad Pro hasn't been able to replace my laptop the way a Surface Pro does. Recently, I even tried using just an iPad to replace my computer workflow for a week. I'll link that video up above and down below. Like I said, a Surface could replace my laptop. Well, at least a Surface Pro 7 could replace my laptop because it's a laptop. It's just in a slightly different form factor. And if you're wondering, Brad, what is your setup? What are you using? Well, I have a main Mac. I have an iMac that I'm using for video editing and that sort of thing and most of my day work. And then I also have the iPad Pro that I use as mainly a companion device just for illustration, writing, some side tasks, things like that. One thing that is clear is that looking at this stuff over the last four years, that gap between the iPad Pro becoming a laptop replacement has really closed. The quality of those apps have dramatically improved. I think there's still some way to go, maybe another two or three years off, but I could see it happening at some point in the future. Until then, if you need a full laptop replacement, I still think the Surface Pro is the way to go. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.